Tudo bem? Boa tarde. Oh, tudo bem? Por favor, cara. Whoa. All right. I am very thankful for the opportunity to speak today. What is the value of the periferia? The answer involves not just the quantitative measurements of space, but also the qualitative indices of geography, value as a practice. The legendary open mic Sarao performer and organizer Sergio Vaz that we see here reflects on investment and in development in his uh, 2013 spoken word poem, Familia Vinci Tudo. In this, he runs down a shopping list of periphery assets to pick up on Sarah's talk today. Barracos, choro de mãe, abandono do pai, escola ruim, fé cega, corpo caído, bala perdida. Yeah, Sergio paints a grim but diversified portfolio. Vin, he goes on to say, Vendo samba de Adorinã, onde a favela fica bonita, com sardosa maloca e tudo, já tem luz elétrica e esse lugar escuro onde o político se ilumina. Tinha até sorriso e felicidade para vender, mas como ninguém nunca usou, se perdeu nos becos da favela. Vendo a alegria, mas tem que levar a tristeza também. Família vende tudo antes que o incêndio acabe com ela. Sergio's screed is not just selling despair and realidade. He and others are selling their knowledge of this reality under new terms to keep that fire at bay. They are also creating new trajectories of cultural consumption. As Sergio Vaz likes to say about the marginal sarau, it's a movement, as he says, na periferia, não da periferia, implying location and directionality and not the tradition of popular co-optation of the margin and stereotypical representations. The peripheral circuits of sarau on the south side of Sao Paulo have become an option along with the traditional bourgeois cultural circuits of Pinheiros, Vila Madalena, and Vila Olimpia. This talk interprets development, investment, and speculation from the standpoint of the margin. It's in this way is a compliment uh, to Mar Maria Carolina's talk today on Sampa's culture industry and to give more visibility uh, following Tiana's comments from this morning. Marginal development depends on practices of information exchange and corresponding geographies of cultural consumption. Ultimately, pop speculation is a perspective that puts the margin in the center of Sao Paulo and has affected a heterogeneous group of residents' sense of self and their attachment to place. Development, of course, is a loaded term. Part of the polemic stems from the fact that development shares a great deal with culture and that both words are utilized to describe projects or policies and judge notions of collective value. It's assumed that development is a form of socioeconomic order guided by universal reason and a rationality of efficiency in production. Development as social spatial design requires speculation, a curious practice of investment and risk. Indeed, the liter literature overall warns us that speculation is a potentially skewing force that can lead to misplaced credit and underdevelopment of so-called real sector economic growth. Such warnings, along with more descriptive analyses of speculation, imply a, certain, a, certain deviance, a sort of deviance, deviancy in the practice. Speculation is marginal, a bet on the other side. With regard to the city, speculation requires an imagination of value on a moving target, an assumption about land values, future trends in commodities, and exchange rates in labor and information. Is it possible that hip hoppers and sarao poets like Sergio Vaz could become speculators or at least exert influence on the process of speculation in the reassessment of Sao Paulo's economic geography? Would such investment in the commodification of per periphery compromise the ethical stance of hip hoppers and sarao organizers as civic leaders and defenders of the precarious infrastructure of the urban periphery? Let's turn to a key strategy of marginal development, information as a practice. Hip hoppers and sarao organizers invest and propagate their worth in terms of information. Similarly, finance analysts have linked the act of speculation to an individual or firm's belief that it has information. In the case of Sao Paulo hip hop, information and idea exchange are practices that involve imaginative exile to gather data always with an eye on the local label of perifa, quebrada, and other colloquialisms for the periphery ways of life. Um, 
Right. In this way, this talk complements one of the points articulated by Reagan about the Afro-Brazilian radio. The example of Mr. Bronx is instructive of a perspective that defines information as necessary located in space and dependent on social agency. Rapper, fanzine, producer, blogger, and veteran activist Bronx grew up and continues to live in the neighborhood Parque Santa Madalena on the east side of Sao Paulo near the border with Santo Andre. We began to chat about a typical subject among hip hoppers, life is hectic with a correria. When Bronx began to reflect, quote, to be an informed guy, I, did, I had to get a better sense of place. He went on to say, to be a hip hopper is all about information. The hecticness took me to a lot of new places and people in the 80s and 90s. And in this mad search, I ended up constructing a larger image of the city and a larger image of myself. I went on producing more and more stuff, fanzines, drawings, scraps, t-shirts, logos, all that stuff. And I was really into it, just like everyone else in hip hop. Sometimes we took over a place in downtown or in a city park, like these are famous places, São Bento and Praça Roosevelt. You know, you get really focused on what you're doing and how you're showing yourself in public. On the surface, information appears to be a conventional substantive, a solid noun composed of reports, data, and facts. This is certainly true, and hip hoppers have emphasized that information is essential um, to knowledge and ultimately power. However, they also use the term as an activity to display their ability to exchange idea, trocar uma ideia. Now, information as path, as a path, has been central to, uh, in Simara's attraction to hip hop. Simara is a local round the way girl who in our conversations during 2009 remembered getting excited about going to the Casa that you see here, Casa de Cultura Hip Hop, located in the industrial suburb of Giadema. Okay. Even though she stressed the importance of hip hop as something that had always struck a chord in her, her stories and recollect recollections quickly moved away from the individual and focused on the collective imaginary. She expressed that the cause is a place where, quote, youth receive information about their history, what it is to be a real citizen, and information about what's out there in the world. Because the cause of professors always try to work in their teoria. Youth learn not just skills, but they also get an ex education in language, history, time and rhythm, mathematics, and something about other places in the world, the path of hip hop. Indeed, the paths of hip hop as exemplified in the dynamics of the hip hop house provide a social cartography of alternative development in Sao Paulo. As Simara implied, the significance and value of the cause is not simply an individual project of identity formation, but a impl new implementation of landmarks. The casa becomes part of a global hip hop circuit linked by path of imagination and idea exchange. For motivated youth like Simara, the success of the casa means that life in the periphery is not simply a rat race to try to find a way into the markets afar in conventional zones of commerce and education, but that there are legitimate institutions here in our space. Now, the idea of directionality as it relates to development and value is even more pronounced in the example of Sarao's. Until recently, the Sarao was an elite bourgeois pastime or a small get-together in an intimate setting. Over the past decade, it has become a regular event, particularly in the south side, in the neighborhood periphery bars that are land, ubiquitous landmarks to residents. Each Sarao draws over 100 people in attendance on average. Now, to help establish the tone, let's watch a one-minute video clip. Um, let's see if I can get this. Cuidado com os poetas. Esses caras são uns subversivos. Propagam indignação e desordem. Se acham no direito de mudar o mundo. Cuidado. Eles estão por toda parte. São bruxos e bruxas cujo ritual mais sagrado se chama sarau. E atacam em grupo. Uma super dosagem de palavras ritmadas. Que atingem seu espírito e modificam-o para sempre. Qualquer pedaço de papel é uma arma na mão de um poeta. E se você vê algum deles 
escrevendo alguma coisa num guardanapo de boteco, pelo amor de Deus, eu insisto, não leia. Catu O meu so Okay, we'll end there with uh Zinho Trindade who we're going to meet in just a second. Okay, now what's striking about the sarau beyond the sheer numbers are the cross sections of people involved. There are basically three types of sarau participants and in this typology I'm going to highlight geography. Many of the Sadal participants are the same folks who would be there on any other night. They frequent the bar regularly and are often excited that a show is going on and that they can perform to an audience beyond their extended family and friends. Another group are those who dedicate themselves to performance art. They are, not, they are usually not from the particular neighborhood, although many of them are from the periphery and share a certain class background position as those of the former group. Their identity is performance and they use the Sadals to work on the craft. Performers such as Zinho Trindade, the great-grandson of the famous Afro-Brazilian poet Solano Trindade, fits this group. He told me, quote, I'm a chameleon in a sense, but I never lose myself. I'm proud of being of the Trindade family and the Afro-Brazilian traditions of song and poetry. What's amazing about the Saraus is that there is an incredible idea exchange, but also a chance to shine within your, with your particular style. Before, people would have to be tuned in to the revolutionary side of Brazilian history to know something about Solano Trindade and his work against racism and poverty. Now his ideas in the style of, of spoken word, rap, and bolada, all of that come together and it's more visible. It's cool. And we all kind of, we, we get all kinds of people checking us out. Zinho, there we go. Zinho is referring in particular to his, the, his rendition of his great-grandfather's poem, Tem Gente Com Fome. Probably Solano Trindade's most well-known text, Fome, tells the story of migration, labor, des desperation, and determination, principally through the literary tactic of repetition. In his performances, Zinho visibly enjoys taking the repeated phrase, Tem Gente Com Fome, Tem Gente Com Fome, and then he ends with, Trein! <laughs> as an opportunity to combine his wide array of vocal styles with the theatric, theatrical facial expressions. And it is this sort of performativity that attracts Fernando, Paula, and other representatives of the third type of Sadal participant. Unlike the first two types, the third type is of a very different class background with a significant different perspectives on Sao Paulo geography. Fernando and Paula represent a growing number of formerly educated middle and upper class youth who have become fascinated with Saraus as part of a larger category of periphery popular culture. In addition to performers, uh, Saraus have attracted um, a number of college students interested in alternative popular and urban cultural expressions. Based on informal conversations, it's evident that not everyone who's slumming it over to Sarau da Cooperifa neologism con cooperative and pedophilia, for example, become involved or engage in university research projects. Certainly some are simply voyeurs who see the Sadals as just another cool taste in the palette of pop flavors of the month. However, one aspect of the Sadal that members of this third type do hold, um, do hold in common is the urban travel and an emergent spatial knowledge of the city necessary to arrive in these out-of-the-way spots. The Sarau is not just a local and occasional academic concern. Mainstream media have period periodically highlighted the Sarau's of Binho, the marginal literature of Fejes and Sergio Vaz. More importantly, a number of grassroots and progressive state cultural entrepreneurs are investing in such development. This is the point. Popular culture performers in working class areas of Sao Paulo have transformed not only their personal experiences, but also local places into valuable assets worthy of state, NGO, and private investment. The movements of hip-hop made manifest in the hip-hop house along with Sadals offer a contrast to the architectural spectacles such as the Otavia Frias de Oliveira Bridge, the new postcard of urban infrastructure, or the cleansing campaigns um, to develop the decadent downtown section, as Kakolange that we just heard about, uh, by abusing and incarcerating scores of homeless. 
the difference is not only in terms of material investment and political posturing, it's about a more directed attention to participatory planning of the urban cityscape. In this talk, I have described the conceptual and geographical threads of information and identification as constitutive of an alternative practice of speculation. The last decade has seen a strong counter-narrative emerge to the conventional tropes of laziness, irrational violence, and ignorance, one in which discourses of periphery identity are foregrounded in new cultural and entertainment institutions. The buildings and personal experiences associated with the Casa and the Sarao circuits are results of earlier identity space connections by pop cultural veterans such as Mr. Bronx. Marginal art forms and practice and compose a central element in the current speculative map of Sao Paulo as to where value lies. It remains to be seen if hip hop if hip-hop or sadals will become just two more examples of capitalist fetishization of the other to be explored and exploited for profit. For the moment, the ownership of place and the primary negotiators of financial sponsorship are local folks with a sense of obligation to place. Location is the ex existential pillar of both hip-hop and sadal, and this sort of proximity keeps these movements as examples of development turned on its head in the name of public participation. Obrigadão. Valeu. Thank you. <laughs>